EFI fuel sump, header tank, auxiliary EFI gas tank. There are a lot of names and a lot of configurations for this type of part. And in this video, we are going to discuss why you need it, if you need it, and some of the features that a unit like this has. <laughs> Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So the first thing I want to do is address the elephant in the room. I've been really good at putting up a video every single week, even when life has gotten super crazy. And over the last month, there have been no new videos. What the heck is going on? Well, at the beginning of July, I ended up having some unexpected surgery and the recovery has been slow. The good news is I am recovering. I will be able to start putting up videos again. The problem is those videos require me to be doing projects in the shop and I'm not quite up to speed to be able to do projects in the shop yet. So future videos may be a little sporadic. I'm going to try and get back to the once a week plan and you may see a few more videos on projects that I've already done things that I've already got, pictures, photographs, that kind of thing on. Ultimately, I hope to be back in the shop doing things on a regular basis and bringing you along for the ride. All right, let's dive right into this. First of all, why do you need one of these? And the answer is you may not. In order to run EFI, you need a high pressure fuel pump. And most of those high pressure fuel pumps are designed to go in the gas tank. Now, first and foremost, why is a high pressure fuel pump put in the gas tank? Regular electric fuel pumps are not in tank most of the time. Mechanical fuel pumps are not in tank. Why does EFI require an in tank fuel pump? Well, because of the high pressure, the pump is working a lot harder. It's part of the cooling process to have the fuel pump in the tank. If you're one of the lucky ones that has one of the more, say, popular classic cars, if you happen to have a Mustang or a Camaro, you can easily get a replacement gas tank already set up for EFI, or you can even get a pickup with an EFI fuel pump already on it to drop right into the gas tank you already have. But what if you don't have a popular vehicle that there is a ready-made pickup or a ready-made gas tank for? Well, at that point, you've got to figure some things out and come up with plan B. So let's circle back now. What do we do if we can't put a fuel pump easily in our tank? Now, there are lots of ways to skin a cat. There are lots of aftermarket things out there. You can drop your tank. You can cut a hole in the top. You can get a retrofit EFI setup that drops down into the tank and bolts into place, seals up. But that's not always the best option. Enter the auxiliary EFI fuel tank. Now, this one's an Edelbrock, and this one was actually made by a friend of mine. He originally designed and built these for the Mustang because at the time he was wanting to put EFI in Mustangs and there weren't ready-made tanks and there weren't drop-in fuel sending units that were EFI. The way both of these work is you have some sort of pump drawing fuel out of the tank and pumping it into this or that. In the case of this tank, it is designed to mount at the OEM Mustang tank, and this wing on the side is designed to bolt up a low pressure electrical pump. Fuel comes out of the tank, goes through the electrical pump, goes into this tank. Now, there are no inlets and outlets in this tank. They'll have to be drilled and tapped because everyone's situation is slightly different. And then you also set it up with a return line 
that comes out of this that draws the fuel if it gets up to a certain level and takes it back to the tank. And then you have inside this, you've got a high pressure EFI type fuel pump. Now, one of the advantages of this, besides being able to fully submerge the pump and keep it cool, is you don't have an issue with fuel slosh. If I have a pump that's mounted in the tank and my gas tank is down to maybe the bottom couple inches and I punch the accelerator and the car lurches forward, all that gas is going to go to the back half of the fuel tank and it may starve the pump. Also, being a small container, this is going to generally stay pretty much full, even if you're nearing empty in your regular fuel tank, which means if this is going to stay mostly full of fuel, it is going to stay cooler. And the cooler you can keep that fuel pump, the longer it's going to last. Whereas some of the ones that are set up to be part of the pickup, they can get a little warm and have problems if the tank is allowed to run down to not a lot of fuel left. As I said, this one right here was made by a good friend of mine. He too has a YouTube channel, Glenn's 1965 EFI Pony. And Glenn, I'm not giving this back. And doing the DIY option is a viable option if you have the ability to weld aluminum and do it watertight. This was basically square tubing, aluminum stock, that had an in cap put on each end to be able to seal up this end and to fill in the end on the bottom. And it was the perfect size for the pump. And then you put a lid on it, you put a gasket between the lid. This is actually gonna go in my Mustang. Now, I could get, as I said before, a fuel tank that was set up for the Mustang, or I could spend the money and get a sending unit and just put it in my gas tank. But I've already got this. So why not use this? Why not have the benefit of not dealing with the slosh, being able to keep my fuel pump cool even when my fuel levels are low? It just makes a lot more sense to run something like this when I already have it. So if I already have this, why did I buy this? And let me be perfectly clear, I bought this. This was not given to me by Edelbrock. I'm not sponsored. I'm not getting any kickbacks. Well, if you followed any of my channel, you know that I am in the process, again, got derailed with life, but I'm in the process of building a 393 for my 62 Galaxy. And I am going to fuel inject it. And there's been a whole series that is Frankenstein EFI, which is a crazy project where I am taking two Chevy throttle body injectors, removing the injectors. I machined an adapter to attach them to a 351 Windsor truck lower intake. I'm going to port the snot out of that lower intake because there is a lot of meat there, a lot of ability to open that intake up. And I really think that's going to perform decently well. My 62 Galaxy, they do not offer a gas tank that is set up for EFI. And on my 62 Galaxy, they do not offer a fuel sending unit that has a high pressure pump ready to drop in. So I really had no choice but to go with something like this. Now, I'm sure there are those of you that are thinking, well, what about an out-of-tank pump? And yes, some mid-80s Ford vans and other vehicles did come with an out-of-tank pump that was designed to run cool, but they are super noisy. They're kind of big and cumbersome. I have one, and you will see it in a future video because I'm going to be building a fuel injector testing rig, and that's going to be my fuel pump for that rig. But ultimately, the in-tank design is the far superior way to do it, and that's why all the manufacturers have gone to that. So what is this? What does this give me? Well, this gives me an in-tank design. This has a high-pressure pump in it. So fuel is drawn 
out of the fuel tank. I'll still use the mechanical pump on the motor. It will come into the in. Out will go to the fuel rail. And then there is an overflow here on the bottom that a return line will go back to my tank. Now, I do have the situation where I'm going to have to plumb a return line in the tank, but that's really not that big of a deal. The nice thing is this has the fuel regulator built right in and it's adjustable. It's also got a vacuum reference on it so that if you are running boost or some other things, it will adjust the fuel regulation. So that is a really slick feature that this has. So ultimately this is going in the Galaxy and this eventually will be going in the Mustang. Now, if you followed that EFI series of videos that I have, you know that I'm putting a Stealth Sniper EFI in the Mustang and I'm doing the multi-port injection in the Galaxy. But the engine that is currently in the Galaxy, it's a fairly stout 302, is eventually going in the Mustang. And it could still be quite a while before I get the 393 in the Galaxy. So in an upcoming video, once I get to the point where I can more easily work on projects, we're going to install this in the Galaxy. I'll take you guys along for that ride. And I will be installing the Sniper Stealth EFI on the 302 in the Galaxy. And we're going to start using fuel injection in that car. Then once we get to the point that we're going to pull the 302 and drop the 393 in, this will stay in the car and I'll be set to go. I'll be able to run a couple lines and everything else will be set and the fuel injection will be plumbed. So I hope that answers a few questions. I hope that gives you reasons why you would need either one of these things. I look forward to making future videos for you and I hope that you will come back and watch them. Make sure you click that like button and more importantly, make sure you hit subscribe because I'm constantly working on projects. I'm constantly doing different things. And if you don't hit subscribe, you may miss it. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.